Hi, Jack and Finn. This book is called Seb and the Sun. You have a lot of sun in Singapore. Doesn't look very sunny in this picture though, does it? Seb and the Sun. Seb lived in a sleepy coastal town far in the north, so far north that the sun did not shine in winter, and the days were cold, dreary, and dark as night. Seb missed the sun. There he is. To pass the time, Seb combed the beach for treasures. His friend Walrus was an excellent treasure finder, even in the dark. It's perfect for my collection, said Seb. Seb and Walrus shared a honey sandwich with the crust off. I wonder where the sun could be, thought Seb. Walrus only bellowed, wanting another sandwich. When Seb's toes were too cold to wiggle, he knew it was time to head home. On his way, he passed the miners as they clutched their steaming mugs of coffee and hot soup. He waved to Mrs. Vandermus, who knit furiously by a roaring fire. He nodded to old Bruce Brewster, who put on a second pair of gloves. He said hello to Mr. and Mrs. Muktuk, who assured him they would finish the carving by summer. <coughs> Seb peered out into the day that was dark as night and dreamed of warmer, summer, sunnier times. <coughs> he wondered if there was a way to bring the sun back to his sleepy coastal town, even for a moment. Emma, come here, come here, stop fussing. Emma, come here, come say hi to Jack. And Finn, come. <laughs> she said hi. I know, you want Jack and Finn? You do? Yes, you do, I know you do. You like them. You miss Jack and Finn, do you? Where's the boys? Where are they? Yeah, they'll be back another day. Here we go, that. Oh, she says, I want them to come now. <laughs> I do too, Emma, but we have to wait. That night, Seb made a plan, and the next day he got straight to work. The first thing he needed was rope, lots and lots of rope. The miners had plenty of rope to share. Mrs. Vandermus had ske skeins of yarn. Old Bruce Brewster gave Seb some fishing line from his tackle box. Mr. and Mrs. Mocktuck had no rope, but they gave him a rusty bucket. Seb piled everything into his wagon and made his way down to the fjord. Bit by bit, Seb knotted, looped, twisted, and tied the strands together. The sun must be out there, he said. Walrus snorted excitedly, and together they boarded a small boat and rowed far out to sea. Come here, what's that? Eating something. Carefully, Seb untangled the jumble of rope and tied it to the bucket with a neat barrel hitch. Then he threw the bucket with all his might. What's he planning? Seb and Walrus waited. They shared a honey sandwich with the crust off and waited. Seb's toes were getting too cold to wiggle. He thought about heading home. His eyelids grew heavy, and he snuggled close to Walrus. What's happening? What's in the picture? Walrus barked loudly, and Seb woke with a start. We did 
it, shouted Zeb. Come on, Walrus, I know just what to do. Here he comes. The townspeople marveled at their warm bottles of sunshine. Seb's sleepy coastal town was no longer cold, dreary, and dark as night, but beautifully aglow. He wiggled his toes. They were warm. Walrus only bellowed, wanting another sandwich. <laughs> How did he do that? I'm not so sure that he really could, but fun story. I love you.